If you think this hat is just as cool as it is crazy, same. So let's talk about it, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I made this crazy cool hat. Hey Sun's Face Sun, I'm Daisy Victoria, and I really love this Bronze Age hat. Okay, you know I love hats in general, so how could I resist this beauty? This hat is referred to as a flugelhaube, or a winged bonnet, or winged hat, and it was discovered in Middle Bronze Age tomb sites in northern Germany in Sel, and it is associated with the Lüneburg group of the Bronze Age. The Middle Bronze Age is about 1600 to 1300 BC, and Lüneburg is just south of the Nordic Bronze Age. Many of the images I'm going to show you come from a journal article published in 2021, which is available for free online. And this is a German article. In the Lüneburg culture grave sites, there have been found a lot of bronze pieces. Some of them are bronze tubes, some are these little hat-shaped beads, some are spirals, some are neck rings, clothing pins, armbands, all types of beads, and they have these similar appearances. Some have been found as part of a hat that looks like a bonnet with wings on it, and there are a couple of interpretations of how it looks like these bonnets were made. I've seen a lot of different artistic interpretations of how the bonnet may have looked and been worn, and there are a few reconstructions, though not very many. These reconstructions are done by Thorsten Seifert, and they are really, really cool. There are two different interpretations, so basically those two different styles that are in that article that I mentioned. With mine, I decided to go for the style that I like best, which is the one that has the biggest profile. I guess I just like big hats. It's a thing. First, I needed to figure out what the heck I'm doing and what size the pieces need to be. Now, obviously, this is a hat that needs to go around my head, so I needed to take that measurement. What I also needed to measure are the sizes of the various pieces that are going to basically be the wings and the hanging portions of the hat. So I came up with this diagram. As you can see, I went through a couple iterations trying to figure out exactly how it would work. Next, I used some scrap linen I had to make some pattern pieces for the hat. That way I could just kind of test out the size in visual before cutting them out of my regular fabric. Wool is a plausible material for this hat in the Bronze Age. In fact, evidence suggests wool felt could be used. I happen to have a scrap of wool here. And though we don't really know necessarily of dye evidence for these remains, I decided to go with this dark red because I'm not really a brown person when it comes to clothes, just my personal style. And this is about as close as I get to brown, but actually I really love this color. So I would have made a hat this color anyway. In fact, I have hats this color, so I like it. My hat will be lined in linen, which is another potential material from the period that could be used in these hats. And because I'm using just a plain weave wool, I'm actually going to create the structure of the hat using this very thick interfacing. And this is just one of those super thick interfacings you can get from Joann's or wherever you buy your fabric. So first I had to work on the pieces that require that interfacing so I could work all of that out. To make the wings that go on the sides of the hat, I'm sewing the rectangles that are going to become the wings, and then that way I can turn them right side out and I'll be able to stick the felt up inside them and stitch them closed. For the band and the top of the hat, I'm also using that interfacing. The piece I had wasn't quite wide enough for the whole band, so I'm actually piecing that to get it to go all the way around. 
and that works just fine. The inner facing needs to be slightly smaller than the outside fabric, and that's because I'm going to fold the fabric over the edges of the inner facing in order to stitch it. What I'm doing here honestly incorporates a lot of my experience in making other hats, which comes from much more modern than Bronze Age millinery, but I think it will translate pretty well in making a reasonable adaptation of this hat. Here are the sewn wings. What I'm doing is now that they're already sewn and ready to turn right side out, and now I'm gonna cut out the piece of interfacing that goes inside them. That way I can cut the interfacing to just the right size so that it fits within the seams. And then that way I'll easily be able to push it right up inside the wing pieces and it should fit snugly in there. All right, time for the main piece of the hat. I've stitched the crown pieces together at the back, so they are circles. I've got the lining, which is linen, and the fashion fabric, which is my burgundy red wool. These two pieces are gonna go together, and I'm gonna go ahead and sew those together, right sides together, and turn them, and that way I'll have the lower edge of my hat already stitched together, so that's really nice. Now I can put the interfacing inside the structure I have thus far. This is somewhat like what I did with the wings just a moment ago. It's a little different in that it's I guess finicky because it's a round structure, right? Instead of just being flat. And once I get that in there, I can then stitch the ends of the interfacing together. And the reason why I put this inside the hat before stitching it together was to make sure that it's the right size. So if it was a little bit too big, I could cut the excess off. If it had been too small, I could have added some on, but it looks like it's good, so yay! That means I can stitch it right together. Now that that interfacing is stitched together, it's time to stick it back inside the hat. I've pinned the upper edges of the fabric together, and as I'm doing this, I am folding it over to create a hem. Now the way I'm constructing this portion of the hat and the top is in fact something I know from more modern millinery practice, and that is to complete those two pieces separately and then put them together. And I think that creates a really clean look, so I'm gonna go ahead and try it out here. Here I am stitching the lining around a piece of interfacing for the very top of the hat. Most hat making involves a lot of hand stitching, and in fact almost all of this hat is hand stitched. There's only a couple of machine stitches that I did at the beginning. No more machine stitches the rest of the way. Sorry self, but you can do it. So I stitched the lining on first, and I'm folding that over the edge of the felt. And then after the lining is stitched on, then I stitch the fashion fabric on, folding the edge over of that as well. Here I'm going to stitch the other piece of the hat so that 
round piece that I've been working on. I had gone ahead and pinned it, but I hadn't stitched it yet. So just go ahead and take care of that. You can see I've pinned throughout the interfacing here, and that's just to keep things really nice and flat and not creating wrinkles or anything weird like that. Okay, so next it's time to put these pieces together and that's gonna create the main structure of the hat. They are both finished off pieces and all we need to do is stitch them together. Now I can start adding all the craziness to this hat. Starting with the wings, I am going to stitch those shut. So these are two pieces of fabric sandwiched around a piece of interfacing. So I'm just gonna stitch that opening right there. The wings go just onto the sides of the hat. I decided to make them perfectly even. To do that, I measured around the entire circumference of the hat, divided that in half. So I found the front and the back and then found halfway between the front and back on each side. So basically it's divided into quarters or it's just halves if you go from side to side. But I do have that seam in the center back, so that's why I divided in half to find the front first. And these wings are just hand-stitched on. Next, I decided to make my little dangly bits a little bit narrower, so I cut those down a little bit. I am not going to hem these because the wool doesn't really fray and I don't think it's necessary. So these are getting attached to the lower edge of each wing. And now it is time to decorate, yay! I'm going to be placing a lot of these little beads on the front of the hat in rows and columns. What I'm doing is I'm measuring so that they are equally spaced all the way around the hat. So to do that, I found the center front, which I had already marked because I already found it. So I measured from center front to wing and just determined what I thought was a good amount of spacing and divided that equally into the number of beads I'm putting on there. And I am going to be doing five rows, each row containing four beads in a column. I'm using these little five-pointed flower-shaped bead caps that I got off of Amazon. To me, these look like a pretty good approximation to test out the structure of this hat. And I really like them and I'm going to wear it, so that's what's most important. Now in those grave finds from the Lunaberg group, 
we saw two types of tube beads. We saw beads that were actually just a metal tube, and then we also saw beads that were spiraled, like a little spiral wrap. And this is something that I know is seen in other areas in the Bronze Age and even in the Iron Age and the Viking Age as well. And this is something that I've been wanting to try out for a while. So I thought I'd go ahead and choose this method for mine because I think it looks really pretty. To do that, I got some craft wire and I am wrapping it around a knitting needle that happened to be about the size that I wanted them. And I am just wrapping this until I have enough length to cut it into enough pieces or beads for my hat. It's not the most complicated activity, but it does take a bit of time and it's a good thing to do while you're sitting and watching TV. To cut it into my beads, I decided how long I wanted my beads and that's just based on the size of my wings. I decided that I wanted them to be two inches. So I am just measuring those, and since this is a wire, I can clip it with my handy dandy wire cutters. So here is one wing decorated, yay! And I'm about to do the second wing. I measured out where I want all the beads to go, just like the way I did on the front of the hat. So I measured across the wings and set them an equidistance apart. So I wanted three high in the columns and four across in the rows. So I'm putting 12 spirals on each wing and then I'm putting more of those little flower beads in between them. So that means that I measured my wings and divided it up into that number of bead spacing. This is really simple math here. It's just measuring across where I want them and dividing it by the number of spaces in between them so I have even spacing. After what seemed like much less time than I thought it would, honestly. Hand sewing never takes me as long as I think it will in my head. I got those done and it was time to move on to the dangly bits. These are going to hang down the back of my shoulders, so I am attaching my beads onto the back of these. And I decided to place them about an inch apart and to do two across all the way down. I'm not going all the way to the bottom because I'm actually going to purposefully fringe the bottom of these and I think that'll be really cool. And next I made a little, I don't know what to call this, necklace-esque piece. It's on a piece of cord and I've just tied it to rings I've sewn onto the ends of the wings. This is made of more of those spirals and some more beads I found at the craft store. And that is the hat decorated. So I think that it looks super, super cool. It looks a lot like the drawings and the interpretations of the grave finds, which was my goal to make an interpretation of that that I would like to wear. The hat looks really great on my mannequin, which is also dressed up in the shirt I made in a prior video. The skirt is just a rectangle of fabric, which is belted on, and this can also be switched out to a longer skirt, and it can also be worn with a cloak or shawl or whatever you want to call it. It's another rectangle of fabric, which can be pinned onto the outfit as well. 
And some of these bronze pieces I actually ordered off of Etsy from Altmark Bronze in Germany. He made the belt buckle, which is a copy of the Actved Girl, the neck piece, and then the clothing pins as well. And he does really great work. Now, the final thing that we want to do is actually test this out and see how it works. That is an important part of experimental archaeology or experimenting with what we know from archaeology to kind of interpret how people might have really used the items. I started by putting that piece in the back, but it really did not work very well. The wings kept flapping back too much. So we ended up moving that to the front, rearranging some of my jewelry so that everything worked out well aesthetically, and also added a heavier pendant to help to counterweight the wings forward. And this worked out pretty well for me throughout the day. I love the way these wings flap. They are so fun. This is one of the funnest outfits I've made. And the way I'm wearing it here with a linen top and a short skirt, it works well for warm weather, which is exactly what I live in. If you find any inspiration from this, I would love to see what you do. You can find me on all the social medias as Daisy Victoria. My website is daisyvictoria.com and a special thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. I hope you all have an absolutely magical day and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.